Hi there, you've got a Zappi EV charger, or maybe you haven't, maybe you want to know what a Zappi EV charger is and how it integrates with solar panels. Let me show you right now. So I'm going to show you the Zappi charger running and um, you can see what it's all about. So first of all, what I am going to do is show you just a little clip that will come over the screen now which shows you what the Zappi charger looks like outside when it's plugged into your car. My car can only charge at a maximum of 3.4 kilowatts, but the Zappi charger can go way more than that. It can go up to 22 if you get the appropriate Zappi charger, 22 kilowatts. But typically 7 is what you might use. But let me show you what this looks like when it's running right now. So there we are, that is the app itself running. What I've got at the moment, at the bottom of the page there on this little um, dashboard, you'll see the solar panels are generating 1.5 kilowatts of electricity. I'm currently using 0.2 kilowatts in the house, which means I've got point, uh, 1.3 or thereabouts, but of course the sun's going in and out all the time. And at the moment I've picked a, a mode which is called Eco Plus. Let me show you the modes now and how they work because Eco Plus will intelligently um, switch between charging and not charging. So charging the EV and exporting. And it's a function, it's a combination, a calculation it does between the amount your solar panels are generating, the amount that your house is using to give you a residual amount that you would otherwise export, and then something in the app as well which can determine whether or not you're going to send stuff back to the grid or send it into your car. So I'm gonna click on the car icon to the left now and you'll be able to see what all that is about. So at the moment, what I've got here is a th there are three um, modes there. Let me just move myself out of the way, there we go. Charging modes. The first one, let's move myself over the top of that. It's called fast. Fast will give you that charging at, that, at those really fast rates and you can use that. It will charge until it's full, so when your car it's actually full of charge it will just cut itself off automatically so that's the first one straightforward plug it in and charge easy as you like next up let's move across there you go there's eco so what does eco do well, eco will charge at a lower rate and the minimum it will charge at is 1.4 kilowatts so what the eco mode does is in in um, tandem with your solar panels it will charge your car at a minimum because that's the lowest it can go 1.4 kilowatts and it will draw as much electricity off the solar as it can. But let's just say it was only drawing off um, one kilowatt and it needs to get to 1.4. It will then draw off the national grid the residual amount to bring it up to 1.4 kilowatts. If it just so happened your solar panels could generate more than 1.4 kilowatts, say two kilowatts, it would carry on and charge up to two. It would draw nothing off the grid until that grid until that charge, the residual amount that you're using, drops less than 1.4, then it will supplement from the grid. So that 1.4 is the magic number. That is, a, like I say, a combination of generation and what you're using in, in your home at the moment. Next up, let's move across to the next one. This is called Eco Plus. So on the, um, gr the graphic that it will show on the charger itself, it will show one leaf, which is saying it's environmentally friendly that's eco and it will show two leaves or leaves if you prefer where it's on eco plus and what that does is it will do the same as, as the eco mode but as soon as the the um, generation amount drops below 1.4 it will then say stop charging so if it's going to be a nice sunny summer's day my system's got two kilowatt system it can go over 1.4 but of course i might be using um, 0.2 or 0.3 just in the house generally just with appliances running like the fridge and things on standby and things like that so I'm going to need my solar panels to be kicking out something like 1.6 to 1.7 to achieve the 1.4 which it needs to start charging then there's this thing below if you look further down here let's just move right down to here down here look let's move myself back about the way there's that little leaf there and a little slider. And what you can then do on that slider is you can slide um, to the left or to the right. And what it's effectively doing here is it's saying, we'll go on this eco mode, but in this instance, I've set it to 60%. It will work with 60% solar. So let's just paint a scenario. You've got the sun shining and I'm generating 
two kilowatts okay i'm using 200 inside the house for on residual things so that means i've got one kilowatt being generated i need to get to 1.4 which will be exported it's one one it would have been one kilowatt being exported i should say so if i've got um one kilowatt being exported ordinarily because i i'm I haven't got a an excess of electricity 1.4 would say no don't charge your phone because Steve Dog is going to need to draw off the grid. But instead, you can set that slider to 60%. And if the 60% of export goes over the 1.4, then it switches on and starts generating. If the sun goes in and then the amount of generation drops down and with a 60% addition still doesn't get over the, the um, 1.4, then it will just stop charging. So that's the way I've set my system up for the 60% at the moment. In the summer, I might go 100% and say only when you kick straight over the top of that 1.4 excess amount being generated, then um, then you can stay switched on for longer. But at the moment, it's springtime. I'm not going to get a, a, over that excess of 1.4 too much. So I'm setting it at 60%. So just think about this. This means the most that it will cost me to charge this car is 60 percent um it'll be 40 percent because i'm supplementing the 60 percent from the solar so it'll be 40 percent times my standard day rate of 28 pence per kilowatt hour do the maths that's 11.2 pence per kilowatt hour that it will cost me to charge my car which is pretty damn cheap of course, I'm not exporting at that time. So if I was exporting at six pence a kilowatt hour, I would get a bit of money back. So I've got to I've got to do the maths with all of that. But essentially, my car, which is a 10 kilowatt, 10 and a bit kilowatt battery, which will get a range of 24 miles. I've done the maths on this. And basically, to fill the equivalent of that battery with fuel would cost me four pounds. To charge it on daytime rate, at 28 pence a kilowatt hour cost me £2.80 or thereabouts. Now I'm down to about eleven um one pound twenty or thereabouts to charge. So it's like a quarter of the cost of using fuel. Um what else what else can we use this app for? Let me just go back to the main the main page there. Let's just put myself down here so I'm nicely in the middle of the page. And as you can see at the moment, it's saying um we're not drawing off quite enough. So Send it back to the grid, Steve Dog. But in a moment, when that 1.5 at the bottom goes up and the residual amount on the right um, kicks in, it will then say, OK, start charging. And now this, bear in mind, is like almost real time, but it doesn't it doesn't click on and off, click on and off like every second. It will it will take a moment to consider whether or not it needs to change what it's doing. So at the moment, it's not charging. What's it saying at the top of the page? Surplus available. Okay, it's saying surplus of it. Now it's just switched now. A moment ago it switched. Just saw that switch. Let's see if it shows us on here. It's switched and said there's a surplus. So we can start charging. So it's going to in a moment start firing no stuff back out to the left hand side there. It's not doing it at the moment. It's killing my argument, but it does do this, trust me. Okay. What else can you do here? It helps you monitor energy use. It's a really nice little app. And then what I need to consider is the use of nighttime tariffs where I can get cheap electricity and also change my feed-in tariff arrangement to something similar to a feed-in tariff so that I can actually maybe export during the day and get more money for exporting than importing on a nighttime tariff. All these things to consider, hey? So, so without my messages coming through, um, that is the way it works at the moment and at the minute it isn't letting any charge go through although on there it's saying it is charging so on this app here it is saying let me move this thing out of the way at the top there so i can see it's actually saying at the moment it's charging it's not charging it's saying it's ready to charge but there's no kilowatts at the bottom as well further down the page with this app you've got the history of when you've been charging so you can see there that little arrow there indicated it was charging a minute ago you can also schedule in 
when you want um, your Zappy to charge so it maxes and maximizes your best charge times. Like I say, it will switch off when you want it to switch off. And you can use the phone to manually switch on and off as well. So you don't have to be reliant on schedules. You can do it yourself. So there we are. At the minute, I'll be honest, I'm surprised I'm not charging. But I've only got 0.4 coming through. Of course you're not charging. It charged a moment ago. It might charge again in a moment. Hopefully you found that helpful. So there you go, folks. That Those are my thoughts of the Zappy charger, British made. Um, you can have them with a tethered or a non-tethered charging cable. If it's tethered, it can wrap around the charger and keeps it neat and tidy and it's got that convenience. If it's untethered, tethered, you can unplug it. Of course, um, that might have that might suit you better. One way or the other might suit you. But it's got the on-screen um, control system with the LCD screen. So you can use that to control the Zappi charger. And also, you could, there's a desktop app as well. And that's on your PC, for example. So you can also gain further details on the PC. I recommend using the app. I recommend not sitting too long and watching the app because you'll be looking at the energy flowing in and going to your car. Here we are, folks. It's back in the room. It's charging again. 1.4 being generated. 0.3 being used by the house. It's therefore drawing 0.3 off the grid to supplement um, the charging, which means I'm 82% solar on my charge. So just do the maths here. That's 18% of 28 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's about 5.5p, 5.4 pence per kilowatt hour is how much this is costing me at the moment. That's a bit of a bargain, isn't it? Of course, it doesn't always hit those heights, but I've set it up on the 60 percenter, supplementing the 40. So I'm going to be using somewhere between it could be five to 11 pence a kilowatt hour. It's not bad, is it, folks? Wait, catch you guys on the charging smargin. Flip side. I couldn't have said it better myself.